Hello, and welcome to another Live Code Hangout. Today, we will be working on the Western Friend website. The project is open source on GitHub. I will go ahead and open a pull request earlier in the, early in the session so that if you just want to skip to the changes, you can go straight to GitHub and look at the exact difference of the code. So you'll know how I ended up implementing PayPal payments <clears throat> as far as I get. So we're transitioning from PayPal, uh, from Braintree to PayPal. And I'll just start this with a quick change to our documentation. We're no longer going to be using Braintree. So I'll remove that section. This way I can have something I can commit and push really quick. And open that pull request for reference. Let's make sure there's only brain tree related things. Great, so now we can push our branch to GitHub. We'll open a pull request, mark it as draft. For, and we're gonna work on just the bookstore today, which is an e-commerce. Feature on this website. <clears throat> so here we go. Now we've got a pull request for future reference. If you just want to get the TLDR of what we ended up doing today, you can go to github.com slash Western friend. WF website is the project and pull request number 907. Otherwise, um, you'll be able to just browse the code and essentially check out how we're working in our payments module. And I might create a PayPal module for PayPal specific logic. Let's begin. So the battle plan We can first take a look at the uh, the bookstore a little bit. Let me see if we've got an user interface. And it's an empty page right now. I just have started a, a blank development site. So in any case, we will need to add some books. I'm going to make sure we're working correctly with decimal numbers and that that gets tr uh, translated over JSON as a string so that PayPal will have the correct um, quantity or price for the uh, quantity times price for the transaction for the order. So we won't necessarily have to miss uh, making changes with the bookstore page or the shopping cart. But then we come down here on the bottom of the page and see the URL, it'll go to orders create. When I click this button, it's gonna create an order behind the scenes. So I've kind of modularized the code in a way. We have an order orders module which has a model here. When I just make a get request to this page, it gives us a form to fill, mainly with the purchaser details. And what I'm gonna do behind the scenes is link this with a PayPal 
order ID. using PayPal standard checkout. Now the documentation is for Node.js, but this is how it's gonna look when we get to the, to the payment page. It's gonna essentially display a PayPal button. Now I've started on that. I've done a little bit of experimentation here. But let's get first through the order creation process because what has to happen first in this cycle, even though PayPal's documentation starts with the, the payment page. I need to use the PayPal orders API to create a, an order that will get sent to the client for verification. that field And we'll replace it with a PayPal order ID. So in our orders, I must have a view here. Create order. Function based view. We get the cart items. And we check if we're making a post, which is meaning we're submitting the order form. If not, we're going to render the order form, this page. So this is all going to be the same. Which is good. However, when handling the post, We validate the form. Clear the shopping cart. And hand the order ID to the payment page. And that's essentially going to be, here you can see, oh, it's a post, so we can't really see anything. It's just posting to the same endpoint. And that'll be where we'll render this PayPal transaction. <clears throat> so what I need to do before saving the form, 
Let's create PayPal. Create a PayPal order by making an HTTP request. Yeah, I wish I could hide this sidebar here. It's just not very. Yeah, it's a little bit better. Now this is unfortunate. The version three API is coming up, which means I'm gonna have to refactor this code in a while. So yeah, I'm gonna create another app here, which will handle the PayPal logic. And I'll call a function. Equals, and we'll come back to this in a moment. Actually, this is pretty helpful. Yes, wow. Gave me my interface. <laughs> I believe I'll just call it WF PayPal or just PayPal. There's not an official PayPal SDK. In Python. So I won't have a namespace collision. I did a little bit of searching. been archived. <clears throat> they used to maintain one, which unfortunately no longer is under development. Yeah, which would have been great. Uh, I'm not going to start uh, uh, <laughs> a Python SDK. save my ice cubes. Let me just set these environment variables off stream real quick. So basically, I've created three environment variables. I'll go ahead and add these to the documentation.
Let's see. All right, just a little bit of note to self. Commit that. So those I'll come back to. I've got a new PayPal app. Let's just commit that scaffolding code. So this will be the probably the code that's the most interesting to anyone who's implementing PayPal in your own project. Uh, this is open source, so feel free to adapt this code to your own needs. It's going to be in the PayPal. Let's see, uh, where is it? So this is gonna close 906, pull request. Won't close it, it's related to it. I'm focusing only on the bookstore payments at this point. I might do it all in one pull request. There's uh, donations, payments, and subscriptions that are all using a payment processor. I'm going to try to use them for. Uh, use PayPal for all of them. All right, so here's the point. Um, you can look at the files viewed, and mainly just be checking out these PayPal, this PayPal library. <clears throat> the rest of the stuff is pretty specific to our project, although it does give a good working example of concepts like a checkout flow, shopping cart, bookstore, and potentially recurring subscriptions and donations uh, if I get those into this pull request. Cool. So the URL is here in the chat as well. Yeah, I got to work on this chat a bit. I'm trying to make <laughs> the text a bit easier to read on dark screens, but you see it's pretty, not too bad here on this. Cool. So that's going to submit the form. <clears throat> I'm going to refresh my tonic and lime 
think about the next steps. Basically, I'm going to make a request, an HTTP request to PayPal. So I'm going to start scaffolding this PayPal library. I'll be right back. All right, I'll try to get some background music on this stream so it's a bit more interesting. Nonetheless, here we are. This won't be a, a traditional app. I'm thinking it might be that I want to synchronize the PayPal data. I don't think so. I'm going to really try to keep it simple. Fairly minimal. Our, our brain tree integration was really minimal as well. Actually, we just used the brain tree SDK and made a call to it, but we've decided to go revert to PayPal, which means more coding. Okay, so I need to register this app with our core. So it'll be picked up. Yeah, need to remove those. Now I said it should be uppercase. Oh, I'll fix that a little bit later. This might be good later. Apparently I will need a webhook ID. <laughs> I didn't think about that, but yeah, that makes sense.
things I have to write, I have to write it. It doesn't, <clears throat> doesn't really exist yet. Cool, I think we're pretty good there. Uh, so now I need to I need this API. So from PayPal, uh, I can import PayPal. And then we'll just create a No, I don't think so. This is too tied to our our cart. Uh, this was a good API. Intent purchase units. Yeah, all we're going to work with is this. Purchase units has an amount. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. No. All right. That's all I think. So then our API changes a bit. Let's see if this can pick up on that. Intent, purchase units. Let's see what it recommends. Maybe nothing. Thinking, something's thinking. All 
I'm thinking. <clears throat> so I'll need a request library, like requests. I don't know if requests is still the thing. supporting any other currency codes. I just want to kind of constrain this a bit. Give myself some some help. We're just not going so deep into PayPal. I don't want to have us reliant on a third party module that may fall out of maintenance. If the code is just making HTTP requests at this point, I'd rather write it. So yeah, it's, it's Should we use an HTTP client versus or re request? Or URL libs, right? Oh yeah, and then HTTPX. And this is what I don't really like is, well, we have a really good standard library. I should be able to just use that. Let 
Not too worried about async right now, but okay, that's good to know. So I would be leaning toward HTTPX or HTTP client. strong opinion in this regard. One thing uh, I could check if I might have a transient dependency. My requirements that'll answer for me. See, I already have requests. All right, that's easy done. All right. <laughs> Requests is HTTP for humans. I do like the premise. All right. Well, what we need to do then? Save. Right, I need to get a bearer token. I don't know that this is necessary anymore.
content. Interesting. I could simplify this and just pass in the currency and amount from the calling end and not have to worry about essentially this internal stuff. Well, I would like this. Okay, so maybe I'm doing this wrong. I would like to just only allow certain values. Yeah, I think it's an enum. this means okay this is pretty cool So I'll take a quick break, about five minutes, and think about the next steps. How, for example, strictly do I want to be parsing these? What are my expectations here? Uh, to return out of this function, for example, I do want to annotate this. It's 
annotated as a dictionary. Can I get any more specific? What I really want is probably just the order ID. Or an exception to be raised because I'm going to attach this order, this PayPal order ID, to a Western Friend order object, or potentially, yeah, I think it's just the orders at this point. We're not work, we're not working with donations or subscriptions, which will be a little bit different. Similar implementation, but it'll be creating a subscription in both of those instances because they could potentially recur. The donations are recurring or non-recurring, so they're a bit straddle the line. Uh, so there will be some boilerplate code, but I think this is a general pattern, and I'm really appreciative of Copilot here because this is fairly common code, fairly conventional. So Copilot's able to give me a lot of assistance. But again, uh, this code is open source. You can uh, check this pull request number nine oh seven at a later point if you're watching this. Take a quick break and we will continue with the, we'll test this function and see if it uh, appears in the PayPal sandbox.
All right. We will continue. I think I will return just a string here. And well, that's actually correct. I think so. I think so. It knew <laughs> uncannily it knew what I was after. I just uh, I don't know what's in this, Jason. I think the I think the intent is always going to be capture. Really just straightforward abstracting, you know. So all I need to do is pass in even the currency code, honestly, could be hard coded here. <clears throat> We're only going to be We're only accepting um, payments in USD, you know? I'll make it in, like, explicitly implicit. <laughs> in other words, I use the default currency code. I don't know if this is a foot gun. I'm not trying to cut corners. I'm really just trying to, you know, I don't mind having it as an argument. But even in our data model for these um, books, products the price is just a decimal field there's no currency we're literally it's just um, you know this was written a while ago <clears throat> nonetheless though uh, it's implied that we're operating in USD That's one small improvement. Mm. 
This could be problematic. Backwards compatibility. Yeah, that way my my aggregate function here is going to look at item prices and sum them as a total cost. So I needed to have that alias. So I need to I don't know what this does. I should give myself a little more hint. This order Yeah, and just for good faith, I'll push these up to GitHub so they will be reflected here in this pull request. very short moment because I'll need to make an actual request now Thank you. 
been here before. Ooh. Interesting. I wonder how this is coming along. Okay. Just kind of reminding myself why sometimes I write code. <clears throat> you know, I, I can see what the code is doing, how it's written, and what it outputs or whatever. But I don't always understand why I wrote this function that is just an alias of another field, right? Why? What was I thinking? At that point. Very cool. Now we have this new feature that was added at my request, feature request, to Wagtail. A lot of people are actually very interested in getting this to happen. Um, essentially, some of these fields, this will turn into a form. Wagtail renders everything for us. Really nice. Uh, saves a lot of boilerplate. But we don't always want the fields to be editable because if somebody changes the PayPal order ID on our side, we lose the reference to what's going on in PayPal. It, this is an important reference for auditing purposes. So, making it read only and removing the brain tree one. Seems I can make some improvements here, like grouping recipient fields with one another and then purchaser fields and payment fields, for example. I could even, if I haven't already, from the order model, I have one here, get to a cost. So that would be a subtotal. Get subtotal. Because then the shipping cost would be added. There's some improvements I can make here.
Maybe there's a better name for it. It worked. Has to be a string or decimal, which is basically a string. I'll change that in a minute. Wow. <laughs> Celebrate that. Off stream, I'm going to go over to my little developer sandbox. Check my API calls. Whoa, this is all work. It's going to work. Okay, we got a post request to check out orders. And I didn't log the, um, I have to do this off stream because it's, I'm in a developer account for somebody else's PayPal account. So I gotta be a little bit careful here. Anyway. So yeah, check out orders, 201, debug ID, and I can even get more debug info. 29.95, good deal. Now, how do I? How do I look at my app? Um... orders in sandbox mode hmm
this is an important step. Here we go. Sandbox. I can log in. Very good. I can't get into the sandbox URL, but PayPal developer site dashboard 2014 transactions. Well, sandbox notifications. This shouldn't be so freaking difficult or impossible. I don't know if it's even possible. Just want to verify. Well, I mean, I can see it in the log. All right, whatever. And it was 200 success, so I just have to take it for granted that it was good. Let me just double check the debug ID info. It got the amount. Yeah, I don't know why this just doesn't work. I mean, I go there, but I can't log in. It's asking me to log in and I put in the same credentials. Okay, I found it. It's because I have to use Sandbox account, not my developer account. All right. So I think this I can show on stream. Whoa, I've got some sandbox money. Five thousand sandbox dollars. But man,
their site is a bit labyrinthine. And it doesn't show my transaction here. Now, granted, it's a pending transaction. I will right, come back to this. Go to the activity page. Locate the pending transaction. It isn't there. Yeah. Cool. We'll come back to it. I can show this on stream. There we go. Now if I refresh, perhaps I can see pending transactions. Nope, all I see is this one transaction. Hmm. Money in, money out. Recent activity. I got some um, fake money. Yes, good to go. Now let's, uh, let's continue. So I don't need so many things here. Our repository, I've got pull request. We'll be here. Documentation is good. I think we're pretty good with these. This is we're done. That we're not gonna use. This is good, and I've logged in as my test account. So now we've created an order, but we have to then verify it from the uh, end user. Might have to calculate shipping or include shipping in this price. Let me just make sure when we get the total cost, we're only summing over the cost of the items. Oh, okay. That means our shipping cost is not being included. That's a bug. Because we're passing this in. To the payment processor, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's going to, it's now going to PayPal. So, yeah, that's going to exclude the shipping cost. All right, we'll fix that.
I should be correct. Now at this point we still may be dealing with integers. Oh no, the des the shipping cost uh, is a decimal field, but 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 wait. These are all integers. Getting kind of carried away here. Ah, let's just roll it back. No changes needed. We'll get some tea real quick. I think we should always work with either integers or decimals. And try not to intermix those. I'll look at that in one moment. So the other way would be to take the sum, quantize that, or convert that to a quantized whatever it was. Decimal. All right, I'll just grab some tea. I'll be right back. Yeah, thank you, Python, for being able to handle that. 
not always sure, so it's why it's good to have a, an interpreter handy. So we can add um, integers and uh, decimals without it issue. Good. Here we go, subtotal. Yeah, I'm wondering why I needed to do this string, uh, casting to string here. All right. Now it's a double database access. Um, It would be nicer if I could just get the entity without saving. Hmm. Commits false. Okay. Makes sense. I don't know, just avoiding a double write. Yeah, because the cart really, uh, on this case, um, now we clear the cart, it probably shouldn't be cleared until we know the transaction succeeded. If the, the second part fails for any reason, you know, it'd be nice from the user perspective to be able to recover. All right, I think I should commit some of these things. We're pretty good. So, uh, for example, and some tests. We'll see if I introduced any bugs. So what did we do?
And what's confusing These are decimal fields. So this doesn't need to be an integer I'm on the model. I believe this can be a decimal. Of all these operations. Just let me double check the get cost, but yeah, it's returning a decimal anyway. Okay, yeah, I feel better about that. Using one or the other consistently, we're using decimal because of currencies, and if we can just use that everywhere, then we're good to go. All right. Age sub range. And that might have worked fine because of the way the current payment form works. It adds the shipping cost at that point. We just needed to include the shipping cost a little bit earlier here so that we can set the PayPal transaction, uh, kind of initialize it in PayPal and then verify it in the next step with the user. What do we do here? We'll come back to this. This I don't need to necessarily do, but here we go. Wow. Seems to work. Yes, so in the view, this could, uh, fail. Oh yeah, HTTP error. Okay, that's a little cleaner.
Mm, I don't know. Just a level of abstraction. So we're abstracting away from the API request response into sort of a service layer. We can re-render it there. Um, Messages, messages. I think you can do this. Well, anyway, yeah, it makes it a little easier to read. Uh, there's another way of doing this because this is going to be have I think it's going to have all this padding here. I'll test it out. This a bit less verbose here.
Ah, that's too much. All right. Not too bad. Let me see first. I should commit this PayPal stuff. Yeah. This is a big milestone here. It's also two hours. It's a good stopping point. So what I'll do is I'll push these changes here. Refresh the page and everything is now visible. Under pull request number 907 on github.com slash western friend slash wf website so as i mentioned at the beginning of the stream i'll have the everything in this pull request so you don't have to watch you know of course when you figure things out you can see the conclusion i arrived at mainly doing the live stream so that if people stop by and are curious about web development and other similar topics we can kind of chat a little bit as well it's called a parasocial activity, <laughs> sort of socializing, but not quite in real life. Yeah, it's not too bad. So I will continue. The next session with the second half of the order creation process, we've got an order created in PayPal. It's pending the payment. So we're going to now redirect to, in the success case, we're going to redirect to the, um, where we're not handling there. We're going to redirect to the payment page. I'll have to have a bit more clarity and, and a moment to reflect on the next step for this. So yeah, this has been another open source live code hangout. If you're interested in this or similar projects, stop by github.com slash Western friend. We have some uh, open issues that are good 
for first uh, timers or just where we generally want to help? Good first issues are purple. There's a number of them and most of these aren't uh, urgent. So there are little things that if you've got some interest, even in just code quality, you can uh, swing by and pick one of these up, see if it's still relevant to the project. All right, well, I hope you're doing well and have a great day.